This video is sponsored by Squarespace. How's it going guys? Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. Welcome to another video tutorial. Recently I've been getting a lot of requests to do more trap code mirror and chocolate dao tutorials. And so I thought I'd record a quick one here today talking about how to create this kind of water texture kind of simulation here within trap code mirror and after effects, you know, it's not going to be exactly perfect. It's not going to be a, you know, a real flow simulation and stuff like that. But, you know, if you're in a time crunch or whatever, this can kind of work for a certain things, more stylistic approaches, not so much photorealistic, but more stylistic approaches for titles or maybe some quick like drink commercials or whatever like that. And basically the key to this thing is, again, just a lot of experimentation with the fractals and the lights. So let's go and get started here. Let's go and create a new comp. Let's we'll call this water demo. Ten seconds long, hit OK. And I'll just copy my background layer, uh, which is a gradient. And now go and create a new solid and call this uh, mirror water. And I'll go ahead and apply the trap code mirror effect. And mirror is one of my most favorite plugins to play around with just because you can create so much cool stuff uh, with this plugin without very much effort here. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and increase the size in Y. Just like this. We'll increase in X a little bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and increase the number of vertices. You really want to crank this number up high so we have a lot of detailed divisions for our warping and our displacement in our fractal displacement and stuff like that. And you know, this is the part where you kind of just shape your, your trap code mirror to the, the, the kind of geometry of your water here. Um, you could do this with trap code tau. There are a few um, caveats that you need to be aware of when doing it with, with tau, but technically with tau, you would have a lot more control over the path and the direction of things. So, you know, if you're water bending or whatever you're trying to do, or controlling these weird fluid paths, um, tau would be the way to go. But in this case, I just want to make some pretty static kind of background elements here for water. So I'm gonna use Intrepid Mirror. I'm just gonna add a slight bend to this thing. I've noticed that um, whenever you kind of warp it around like this, you kind of create this 3D tunnel kind of look. It gives it more detail in the water texture. So I kind of like it that way. I'm gonna go ahead and create a camera as well. Uh, we'll make it a 50 mil call it camera, hit OK. And whenever you're working with trap code mirror and Tau, you definitely for sure always want to have lights in the scene here. Uh, you never want to be working without lights. So I'll call this light one, I'll make it maybe 80%. Uh, and the trick here is to make it kind of like a rim light. So you don't want to really shine the water directly onto uh, the actual geometry, you want to kind of create this kind of a specular highlight reflection kind of uh, fake look here. So just kind of put some lights on the side here. You can't really see the results right now because the shading's kind of messed up. And so let's go ahead and fix that now. We'll hop into the shader as well as material. And we'll change the shader from density to fong. And so now you're starting to see kind of the, the highlights here. And uh, we'll turn up the multi sampling to 256. And we'll close that for now. And then we'll go to the material and we'll turn down the opacity from 100 to let's just say 15 for now. And you know, already we're starting to get kind of like that really dark black water looking kind of feel to it. I wanna go ahead and bump up the specular. This is what's really gonna sell the effect here, the specular highlights of this whole thing. And then right now it's looking a little bit too chaotic. It doesn't very, it doesn't look like water. And this is the part where you kind of go in between the fractal, the material and the lights and just go ahead and mess around with the fractals here. So the best fractal type I have found to work with this is either the smooth ridge or the multi smooth ridge. Now I like the smooth ridge results a lot better. So I'll go ahead and pick that. And then the key point here is to really turn down the frequency. I'm going to leave it around 300 to 500 around that range. It depends on what kind of style uh, style of water you're going for, whether it's very, very viscous or violent or, uh, you know, more realistic. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn down the amplitude here. It's too intense. Uh, we want to keep it pretty, pretty generous here. So right here, you're starting to see what we're going for here. And to get a better idea of what this looks like um, animated, let's go ahead and animate the scroll Y as well as the evolution. So I'm going to hit alter option and click on the scroll Y. Type in time asterisk, let's just say 40. So that will auto animate the scroll in Y and then we'll add some more variation by doing the same thing for the evolution. Time asterisk, let's say, uh, let's say 20 on this one. And so if we hit uh, ram preview, you can see we have our liquid kind of moving down here. 
And uh, of course you can play around with the movement to make it look more realistic. Um, so let's just say maybe 60 here. Now, if you're going for a more realistic macro approach to water, this com complexity level may, may work for you. Um, but I'm going for a more detailed stylistic macro uh, micro kind of version of the water here. So I really want to go ahead and turn up the complexity to either nine or 10 here. So I'm gonna go with 10. That would add a lot more detail. It's gonna look more like water here. And uh, this is the point where we kind of want to play around with the lights here because the lights really either make or break the scene here. So as you can see, you kind of want one to kind of fill in everything and then one as kind of like the specular highlights um of the water here you can see what kind of does here and I, I just kind of play around with it and then at this point since it kind of looks okay now we can go ahead and turn down the opacity to maybe like even 10 or 12 to really get that transparent look and then i'm gonna go ahead and uh let's see play around with the fractal so we increase the complexity to 10 and then now you want to fine tune it using the scale of the, uh, the uh, scale right here. So uh, increasing it will give you more detail. Uh, decreasing it will give you less detail. So play around with the value until you think you get uh, something that looks good. You basically want to set up your scene first to where it's kind of like where you want it to be. And then that's when you focus on the lighting itself because um, if you move around too much in the camera, um, the lighting will look completely different than uh, what you had envisioned. So set up the the environment the way you want it to, and then uh, adjust the lighting accordingly. Um, but you don't want to increase the intensity too much or else the additive will be too much. And you'll get these kind of weird fractal looks. I think I want to go ahead and create also another light here and we'll call it the ambient light. And that will just kind of, uh, lighten up everything with the ambient here. We'll decrease this just so we kind of fill in the rest here. And so, you know, play around with everything, make sure everything looks pretty good. Um, play around with the fractal, play around with the lighting and then adjust the specular shininess right here, just to kind of narrow it down and also change the tint color to maybe a very subtle blue just to get some sort of absorbance, some kind of color here. I'm gonna go ahead and increase the size in X. So we add another layer of geometry to the water, just so it kind of gives it that nice look. And uh, let's see here. So if you're playing around with the lighting and the camera movement and stuff like that, um, you kind of get a result like this. Um, it's not perfect yet, but after a little bit of color correction and color grading, it can kind of look pretty nice as well as adding other elements in there. Before we go into color correction and color grading, I wanna go ahead and give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only one place to create an amazing website, whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have a ton of themes to choose from, completely customizable, with an easy to use page builder that allows you to build a website the way you want it to look like without any coding experience required. They have amazing support, and best of all, you can save 10% off your order by using the promo code DOJO at checkout. So check it out, squarespace.com slash dojo. Squarespace, the best place to create an amazing website. So back to the tutorial here, we have this kind of liquid look here. And I wanna go ahead and decrease the intensity of the light a little bit, the rim lights, so that we don't get as harsh um, of a specular here. And we can also do that by going into the uh, material and uh, tuning down the specular shininess a little bit. So let's go ahead and apply uh, a basic color correction to this thing. So we'll go and apply a color correction curves as well as a color correction and apply levels effect. And what I wanna do is I wanna cap the highlights a little bit. I don't want it to be too hot here cause it's kind of an additive mode here. And I'll go ahead and uh, maybe increase this up a little bit, add a little bit of contrast. Just like that. And I'll go ahead and bring the shadows up just a little bit. And I'll also kind of tweak the curves a little bit to add that extra punch in there. And I'll go ahead and just kind of pull up the blacks. Just so we don't have any intense dark areas to kind of make it look like it's not transparent. The goal is to kind of make it fake this kind of transparency 
and go for a more transparent look compared to a solid look here. And I'm going to uh, turn down the blue. It's a little bit too blue for me. Something like that. Looking pretty good. Now let's go ahead and apply an overall color correction to this thing. Um, that would probably help a lot here. So we'll apply adjustment layer. We'll call it CC. We'll apply a color correction. We'll apply curves and we'll also apply a tint effect. And uh, we'll set a tint to maybe 35%, uh, but we'll turn that off. I'll just add an overall contrast here. And again, kind of just clip the highlights. Like that. Maybe we will maybe uh, play around with the blue channel. Maybe play around with the red. And uh, you know, something like that. And then we'll just turn on the tint and we'll set it to maybe 30%, just so we have this really subtle blue texture here. And if we do a quick RAM preview, you're gonna see that we kind of get this really nice uh, fluid looking thing. It's starting to look a lot more transparent now. And of course, by playing with the lights and playing with the fractal, you're gonna get a very, very nice result. And so this kind of looks like you're kind of pouring some water in here. Um, this is a, a weird shape, obviously, but um, I think that a little bit of finessing, you can really, really get this thing to work, to look like water. And then maybe we'll just go ahead and pull up the brightness just a little bit to really emphasize those highlights. Yes, just like this. You really wanna just emphasize the speculars without kind of making it blown out from the additive mode. So something like that. And whenever you add more contrast, you usually need to kind of, uh, it kind of oversaturates it. So you can add a little tint to it. Um, something like this here. And if you zoom in closely, you're gonna see some minor uh, aliasing issues. Um, but usually these kind of things are too sharp anyway. So I usually just apply a Gaussian blur to the uh, mirror layer here. And usually just blur it out by about one or 0.5 pixels to get something like this. And if we do a quick RAM preview, you're gonna see that you get this really kind of fluid motion here. And of course, this is not, does not look, uh, you know, very photorealistic at all. Um, but you know, if you're doing some titles or whatever, you have titles going on, other elements, 3D renders, other other elements in the scene, as well as camera motion and uh, motion blur and stuff like that. I think this can be a very convincing effect for some stylized water, uh, whether it's for commercials or whatever. Uh, the one thing, if you're doing it with Trapka Dao, is that um, you guys don't really have uh, the fine controls of the fractal. There is a fractal for displacement, but you don't have these. Uh, octave scales and complexity and stuff like that. Um, so what you can do is actually use trap code mirror to texture. So use trap code mirror, build the texture map using uh, trap code mirror, and then mapping that over trap code tau surface geometry here. That could work. You can also look up water map textures from 3D applications like 3ds Max, Cinema 4D, uh, Maya. A lot of artists used texture map for water or liquid. So you can kind of add that into the texture material here that would kind of enhance this as well and take it further. But this is kind of how you achieve this kind of nice specular highlight kind of fluidy uh, look to it here. That's pretty much it for this tutorial, guys. My name is Vincent Wynn from the Creative Dojo, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.